All right, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to bring you this content today. I know I'm kind of late to the game and everybody probably has already done videos like this. However, we are going to be talking today about Mulan and what I thought of it. I, I went into this, you guys, I went into this with the best of expectations. I really wanted to give this movie a chance. I really wanted to enjoy it for what it was. I really wanted to just sit back enjoy being able to see a new movie for the first time in a long time. I was disappointed, unfortunately, and I'm not just saying this for the clicks. I'm not just being like, oh, well, I better put out a negative review because that's going to get me the most interaction. It actually was pretty bad. And like I said, I went into it wanting to like it because Mulan, the cartoon, is a really good movie. I really wanted them to at least accurately represent the feelings that I had for that movie, even if it might have been to a lesser extent. But no, Disney just cannot get this whole live action remake thing right. It's like they suck all of the life out of these movies. They take all of the good parts and the things that made made the movie endearing originally. They take them out and then they repackage it as this like exercise in cinematography because it's visually stunning. Like all of these movies are visually stunning. And that's pretty much where the positives begin and end. But I've got like a long list of things to go through. There are some positives to talk about as well, even though there's not many. I just wanted to make sure to remind you all to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to get those notifications when I post a new video or go live. Please comment below what you thought, because I would like for somebody to make the argument that this was actually a good representation of Mulan. But seriously, you guys, like China hated it. Like this movie was meant to pander to China, literally and China hated it. So it's bad. It's bad all the way around. It's not just me. It's not just the people that are like the hate mongers on, on YouTube that, that are like, oh, well, I just want to put, put out a negative review on everything just so I can get the views. It's not that. First of all, I want to I wanna break down what I liked and disliked about the movie. I'm going to just deep dive into the movie and explain to you kind of play by play what I thought about it. First of all, this is the first time that Disney has released a movie of this magnitude that was supposed to be and it was intended for the theater. Right away when you start the movie you can feel that. Like this was supposed to be a big eye-catching on the big screen intro to Mulan. I definitely missed the theater experience when I started watching it and I thought wow this was clearly meant for a big screen and a theater and we didn't get that. The movie loses something just because it it's not on the big screen because it was meant for that. That that's not Disney's fault. That that's coronavirus and you know Democrats shutting everything down and keeping everything locked down. That's that's the fault of that. That's not Disney's fault that they weren't able to release in the theater. And it's just unfortunate that that was the way things had to happen. And like I said, just going back to my point is I really wanted to give this movie a chance. I I was in a good mood. I was in a ami an amicable mood. I really, really was like, I'm going to give these people a chance. I want to enjoy this. I want to have a good time. Even if I'm sitting on a couch, we got the internet to work. So we were able to stream it like everything. And um, I had a little ice cream sandwich as if I was in the theater so that I could try to recreate my movie experience. We had a little bit of buttered popcorn from the microwave. We had it all set up. Everything like if the movie was just good, <laughs> then everything would have been fine. The point at which I realized that my patience was just done with Disney on, on this point was when I realized that they had cut out the scene where Mulan cuts her hair. Because initially, like, the movie is kind of fun, it's lighthearted at the beginning, and then it, it, it did convey the same story, almost, not quite shot for shot, but pretty close, to the original cartoon and I was like well at least this is paying respect to the original cartoon. My favorite scene in the cartoon and I think the most important possibly the most beautiful scene in the movie in the original is when she cuts her hair because it's a symbol. Her cutting her hair is a symbol of I'm l giving up my womanhood. I am literally giving up my life at this point because she's a normal human being who, who's a woman who has, you know, less muscle mass. And so she's not going to be able to fight the men the way that other men will be able to fight each other. And so she's literally sacrificing her life to save her father, who, you know, is too old and crippled in order to fight on behalf of their family. And so she is taking his place and literally sacrificing herself on behalf of him. That scene where she cuts her hair is the symbol of that. 
and that's why there's a big score over it in the cartoon and the score is called short hair and they cut that out they cut that out of the entire movie and i just i'm just kind of floored by that i can't believe like the most iconic scene in the entire cartoon and you literally cut that out like when i say that disney takes out all the good things from their their original cartoons and then repackages it with nice cinematography that's literally what they did i i mean i can't stress this enough it was at that point that i realized this movie like the people making this movie were not serious about making a good movie they did not have a clue what made that movie important to people especially to little girls i just i'm just mad because i wanted to like this movie i really did and for them to cut that scene out was a slap in the face to somebody like me who was a big fan so a couple of other like things about the beginning that I didn't like. The father character is much more animated, pun intended, much more animated in the animated version. The live action father that they got is very stiff. And I, I don't know if that was purposefully done. I don't know if it was supposed to symbolize maybe a little bit more of Chinese culture. I don't know enough about you know, ancient Chinese culture to really be able to make that determination and say, oh, that's what they were doing there. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt here, but I just felt like the father character was wooden and I I didn't connect with him like I did with the cartoon character. And I'm sorry, when, when the cartoon character is better written and better acted than a real life, like live action character, then you guys have a serious problem. <laughs> like this should, it should be the other way around. It should be hard to inject life into a, you know, picture of somebody, a, an animated drawing of, or a, an illustrated drawing of somebody. But it's, it's, Disney seems to have the opposite problem. They know how to make their characters compelling in cartoons, but they don't seem to understand how to make them compelling in live action films, at least in the modern ones. This is the biggest problem, and I think the reason why everybody was so angry about Mulan, because Mulan got wrecked by the populace. Mulan is portrayed as a superhero. The biggest reason why Mulan is a hero to young girls is because she was a real woman is because she was an average woman with average strength, with no skills with a sword, with no ability to do anything other than what, what her culture defined for her to do. And she broke free of that and did something that somebody like her shouldn't have been able to do in the original. In the new version, she has this like superpower and she already knows how to fight with a sword because she did as a child. And, and she, so for some reason, she, the, these almost extraterrestrial powers she has, they just are naturally a part of her and that gives her the edge over everyone else. And so when she fights, when she actually goes to war and she fights, everybody's looking at her like, why did you hold that back? Like, why are you like this? Why are you pretending like you don't have this ability? And, and then the entire movie just kind of falls from that. Like, she's just this superhero and there's, you know, gravity doesn't exist. Gravity doesn't exist. Gravity doesn't exist. Gravity doesn't exist. And the suspension of disbelief is gone. Like, I, it's broken from me. I, I can't take this seriously anymore. There's, there's no stakes in it anymore. There's, she didn't risk anything by going to war she didn't risk anything by pretending to be a man because she has the superpower and she can just fight anybody off that she wants she like there's like I said they took the crux of the movie out and just gave us this package like it's like Rey from Star Wars in Disney princess form and I just don't I don't understand why we can't just have a normal woman What's wrong? Like, what does Disney have against normal women who don't have skills or who who don't have superhuman abilities? Why is it that women have to be bolstered up by some superhuman ability? Why can't a normal woman go out and do something crazy or go out and do something amazing? Because normal women have done that. Margaret Thatcher, come on. I, even if you don't like her, she was a normal woman who became the first and only female prime minister of Great Britain. I'm like... Normal women can do crazy and, you know, ridiculous things. Granted, this is supposed to be a fantasy. This isn't supposed to have really happened necessarily. It's a, f a folk tale from Chinese folklore. It just frustrates me that Disney seems to think so low of women. Women have to have a superhuman ability 
or be you know perfect in every way they have to be mary sue's or they have no value like the average woman who can't you know who doesn't have these superpowers and you know doesn't know how to fight with a sword is unworthy to sacrifice herself in this way and it kind of just shows that disney is the villain in this whole story because they're the ones telling mulan no you're not good enough by yourself mulan you're you you as a normal boring old woman who didn't have you know skills or abilities and went to sacrifice herself for her father that you're not good enough to do that we have to have a superhero come in and do that for you i mean it's offensive like i'm 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 getting pissed off just talking about it i can't i can't fathom how how are you gonna like to all the fathers who work in disney are you gonna go home to your little girl and say yeah you know what you as a normal woman you can't do anything good you have to have some sort of a superpower you have to have a leg up you have to have like whatever you know you have to go sleep with some guy you have to be able to do something that nobody else is willing to do in that fashion in order to succeed you can't just be a normal woman and make a sacrifice like that that you're not you know you're not worthy to to be in that position i mean on top of everything else the the actress who played mulan she was very attractive but she also was just kind of stiff and emotionless and everything was centered around her superpowers and all of that is it's a similar issue with her father like there it was it was like there was no emotion behind like none of these people were people everything was just so wooden there is a contrast between there's one other character who is not wooden and who is actually interesting and is the only reason why i would even consider watching a sequel but i'll get to that in a second because there's a couple of different things that were taken out from the original lee shang was taken out of the movie entirely he was the love interest in the original mulan and he was also mulan's commander in the army they changed it so that her commander in the army is an older guy instead of the young guy Li Shang and then they have her new love interest is this other guy I can't remember his name it was it was pretty forgettable he's he's a fellow soldier I guess and so that's the new love interest that's the only change that they made that actually wasn't detrimental to the movie and in some ways made things interesting in a different way i don't i'm not saying it was better or worse i just thought it was interesting to do it a different way however i it, it's frustrating because the the fact that the love interest and the commander were one character originally really simplified the movie for me in in the cartoon it made it so that you're not having to bounce around oh there's this guy and there's this guy and, and i have to be interested in this guy and how she relates to this guy it just really made it more concise and i think that that's something that a lot of artists have an issue with myself included of just cutting stuff out you don't have to have all these different elements over here just make it simple simplify it because the focus of the story has to be on mulan and mulan's sacrifice not so much on mulan and this guy over here like just simplify it make it easy so that people aren't like oh there's this guy. i don't know i wasn't upset by it i just think that it's frustrating to me because i know the real reason why they split that character into two characters is because of the me too movement and they didn't want to portray Mulan as a soldier who is manipulated sexually by a commander, which she isn't in the cartoon. So I'm not really sure why they thought that it would be perceived in that way. But I guess this is Disney's way of trying to atone for all of their Me Too violations, which continue to go on but that's another story for another disney video they made this new love interest i'm gonna go into a couple of the positives because this the main positive for me was they actually made that new love interest interesting i can't remember his name but he had an interesting personality he actually made a real sacrifice towards the end of the movie that i actually appreciated and had real stakes and potentially could have gotten him killed so that mulan could go on and do her superhero act or whatever and he sacrificed himself and his whole team so that she could get out of there and told her to shut the door and leave them in there with the enemy so that they wouldn't be able to follow and I couldn't, like, that That was, like, real stakes. Like, Disney finally had real stakes. This guy might may or may not die because he didn't exist in the original version, so we don't know if he's going to live. And so for him to do that was actually injecting real intensity to the movie that wasn't there throughout the rest of it because you know Mulan survives, you know her dad survives, you know everybody else survives except these, this new character that they added in. So that was interesting to me. I appreciated that 
he had depth of character. He was developed somewhat, but not so much that he became the focus of the story. And it actually made me want more of his character because it was just like, here's a taste of this character and you might get a little bit more of him later on. The frustrating thing is now Disney wants to ruin it because they're like, oh yeah, he's bisexual. Because he was, there was a scene where I kind of got the vibe that he was like hitting on Mulan when he thought she was a man. And my thought was, oh, he's on to her. He thinks that she's actually a woman. But now Disney is out saying, oh no, he was bisexual. He actually was interested in, in her as a man. And I'm like, okay, so we're just gonna ruin that character. Like, and then I learned, I learned upon research that apparently Lee Shang was supposed to be bisexual, which he wasn't. He very clearly was not in the original, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna go off on all of that. I, I'm just ranting here. It, it just frustrates me because I so wanted to like this movie. There's just no way that Disney can give me a good movie when it comes to these live action remakes anymore. I like the Cinderella version, as I've said in other videos that I've done, and that's about it. The final point I wanna make about all of the negatives of this movie is that there was this witch villain that was not in the original. That on one hand made things interesting because I didn't know what was going to happen to this witch. We know that Mulan wins in the end, but I didn't know where things were actually gonna go with that. I was intrigued by this character. But as the movie starts, she comes across very weak in the beginning. Like, she's got these immense powers and she's unstoppable. But as a character, she's very weak. She's subservient to this man who's in charge of her. And she's just, she doesn't seem to make decisions well. Later on, instead, I mean, I was like getting hyped up when she and Mulan finally met up and, and we're going to have a showdown. And then she just kind of becomes almost this mentor of Mulan because she has powers and Mulan has powers and that's the thing that connects them. Here's the thing that disappointed me. So this witch character can turn into like a hawk or something and she as a hawk can enter, fly in and enter any man that she comes into contact with and take them over so that she can, you know, go into secret meetings and hear things she shouldn't hear and stuff like that. And so I thought, okay, she can enter any man. So that's how Mulan's identity is exposed because she's going to try to enter Mulan and she won't be able to. Well, that kind of happened, but then it didn't. And they didn't even develop that at all. And I thought that would have been an interesting way to go with that. But then it was just like, oh, you have this power. You have this. And why don't you use it? Why Why are you lying to me? Blah, blah, blah. And then, and then she's like, she, she kind of becomes Mulan's mentor. And then she's the one who sacrifices herself for Mulan in the end. Except Except for it's kind of a worthless sacrifice because then Mulan has to go and fight the guy anyway and it's just kind of gratuitous fighting towards the end because there's no stakes because you know Mulan wins. <sighs> Disney, why? Just why? Why can't we have good things? Why can't we? Ha I'm getting depressed even making this video. It makes me so sad. So the good elements. There were three good elements. As I said, the new love interest was intriguing. He had a interesting personality, an interesting way of interacting with the other characters. There was a humorously awkward scene where Mulan goes to take a bath in the river and in the original version she does the same thing but the three guys that she'd been hanging out with in in her platoon or whatever they want to call it show up and they're all excited because Mulan's there and they're and you know they're stripping down because they think it's a bunch of guys together when it, when Mulan is there as well and in this version it's just the one guy and he shows up and he's trying to become friends with Mulan because they started off on the wrong foot. She shoves him off because obviously she's naked in the water and doesn't want to reveal her secret. And so I thought that scene was actually pretty well done. It was a nice adaptation and a change up because the original version of that scene was kind of quirky and embarrassing and silly. Whereas this version was much more, oh my gosh, I'm about to be caught by this guy who I've had a bad relationship so far and he'll, he'll definitely not keep my secret. And also I don't want to be seen naked in the water. So that was, I liked that scene. I liked, as I said before, I liked the sacrificial gesture that the love interest made. Yeah, he, he was a good, a well-developed character. They left the door open at the end of the movie for him to come back and have an interesting, you know, new role in, in a potential sequel, which I, I think Disney probably will do a sequel to this one because it was a big movie and even though it may not have made the money it should have made, I still don't think that it's the fault of the movie as much as it's the fault of 
COVID and th shutdowns and all of that. The other two positive elements were, shockingly, the humor that they injected into the movie actually landed in a couple of different places. There's a scene where Mulan goes in to talk to her commander and her commander says, I, I, I'm very impressed with you and your, your abilities as a fighter. And if we ever get the chance, I would love for you to come to my hometown and so you can meet my daughter and potentially marry her. And because her commander thinks she's a man. She had been, you know, gearing up to confess to him who like what her real identity was and then she decides on the spur of the moment this would probably be the worst time ever to reveal this so then she has to play along oh yes i would be very interested in meeting your daughter and all of this stuff that was funny i thought that was really funny that was a really good scene disney has a hard time with humor you know there was some stuff that was over the top and unnecessary but generally speaking disney does not know how to land humor and it's very in your face and here's a joke here's a joke laugh 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 and they actually pulled that off so i thought that was that was a positive of the movie the final thing that was endearing in the original cartoon but i thought would have really hurt this version of the movie was they took all the songs out completely they didn't even attempt to try to have it be a musical like the original was. And I thought that that was a good move because they wanted this movie to be more serious and more of perhaps not an adult film, but just have a darker tone and less of a slapstick personality than a lot of the other films. And they did accomplish that. Although the film lacks charm, lacks soul and and desire. And it's like, it's like wooden sticks. Like it's, it's like a puppet show almost of you know, characters that largely don't have any personality and, you know, they took all the stakes away. They took away the most iconic scenes. The only thing that was really moving that they left in the movie was this, the song Reflection, which has some of the most iconic lines. I mean, it was an award-winning song from the original Mulan. Unfortunately, Disney just didn't land this one as seems to be the case with every single live action remake. They just cannot recreate the feel that the originals had. And that's just, you know, it's a disappointment, but we'll see. There's, uh, there's a lot of back ordered Disney movies and just movies in general that we're waiting for. So hopefully we'll find something good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching at least getting to see a new movie, even if the movie wasn't that good on Disney plus. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get those notifications, and comment below because I really want to hear what you guys thought. I would I would challenge you guys in the comments to please try to convince me that this was a good adaptation of Mulan because I really wanted to like it and for all the reasons I have stated before, it just didn't work for me. So comment below and I will talk to you guys on the next video.